Welcome to the Montana Historical Society's Homeland Exhibit. My name is Ellen Baumler and I'm standing in front of the Mining and Immigration Exhibit. This discussion is about the gold rush in Montana, which produced more than a billion dollars in gold during the 1860s. While other significant kinds of mining in Montana include silver, copper, and coal, today we're only talking about gold. Mary Ronan was nine years old when gold was discovered in Montana in 1862. She lived through an exciting time and left us a valuable record of what it was like to be a kid in the mining camps. Her family, like many others, lived in Bannock, then Virginia City, and then Helena, following the three great gold discoveries in those places. People traveled to Montana by a covered wagon, like Mary's family, or by steamboat. They could pack very little. And these are some of the things that people brought with them. Not everyone came to mine. There was money to be made in selling goods to the miners. Montana was so remote that everything you couldn't make yourself, like flour and mining supplies, had to come from far away, usually by heavy freight wagons like this, pulled by teams of mules or oxen. Mary's father was a freighter and traveled to Montana mining camps delivering essential goods. The gold closest to the surface is called placer gold. Everywhere, miners turned up the soil and destroyed the landscape in a frenzy to find gold. The first miners panned in the streams. They weren't careful to keep the streams clean, and people were at risk for diseases like cholera and typhoid. Mary's family was lucky and stayed healthy. Miners also used rockers or cradles like this one, which shook the gold out of the dirt. And they used sluice boxes, wooden troughs. Miners poured buckets of dirt and water down the trough. Since the gold is the heaviest material in the soil, it sank to the bottom while the dirt would flush away. Gold stuck in the crevices of the wood. Miners sometimes allowed Mary to clean their sluice boxes. She used her hairbrush to flick the gold dust out of the rough troughs, then blew it into a pile with a straw and put it in a little bag like this called a poke. Mary and her family lived in a log cabin like this one, but miners needed so much wood for cabins, for sluice boxes, and to burn for warmth and cooking that within a few years there were no more trees and the land, once green and beautiful, was violently disrupted. Mary loved the gold camp and had freedom to roam the dirt piles or tailing piles the miners made. But it wasn't always a good adventure. Mining was like a lottery. A few struck it rich, but most drew blanks, and some did not survive. Matilda Dalton came from Maine with her parents and three younger siblings. A few weeks after arriving in Virginia City, her mother and father both died of typhoid fever from contaminated water, leaving Matilda to care for her younger brothers and sister. People from faraway places followed the gold rushes to Montana, and just like everywhere, some were law-abiding and some were not. There was no one to keep order in the towns that sprang up almost overnight. The roads were dangerous and people were afraid to travel. Even Mary's father had a close encounter with a robber. So men took the law into their own hands and rounded up people they thought were guilty. They conducted makeshift trials and executed some 24 men using a rope like this. James Daniels was one of those unlucky ones hanged at Helena in 1866. Mary describes several incidents in Virginia City and in Helena like this. There is only so much placer gold, and when it is gone, there is no more. As the diggings began to play out, and there was little gold left for panning and sluicing, companies formed to use another type of mining called hydraulicking. If panning and sluicing were destructive, hydraulic mining was even worse. Miners created ponds and pumped water to wash the dirt from the hillsides down to the bare bedrock, then sifted the dirt to separate out the gold. They used gigantic hoses attached to nozzles like this one. You can see how it left scars. The final phase of placer mining began much later in the 1890s with a new method called dredging. Miners created ponds by damming up the streams. A boat sat on a pond and as it took bites out of the ground, it moved itself along. A mechanism on the boat sifted through the gravel, extracted the gold and spit out the unwanted debris. 
this was most destructive of all. Tailing piles as big as barns are still evidence of dredging in Alder Gulch.